Hello, good morning. It is 12.30 on November 20th? 19th. November 19th. Um, so it's 12.30 on November 19th, and as you can see from the title of this uh, live stream, we are talking about uh, Facebook fundraisers for birthdays. So just in case you're out there and you don't know what this is, a lot of times people will say on their birthday, they'll put a post up on Facebook that says, I'd like you to donate to this fundraiser or to this charity or to this 501c3 or to this nonprofit or organization. I'd like you to donate to this place instead of you know, uh, doing something for my birthday. Um, you know, so you do it on their birthday and then um, it makes them, you know, feel good about the fact that they've encouraged all of their friends uh, and family members to go to a place that is supposedly in need um, and donate a little bit of money to them. So it sounds like a very good thing. It sounds like something that, you know, we should all be doing and it's it sounds like it could have some really positive outcomes in society. So. I'm going to use an example of one particular organization that I've seen various people throughout Facebook in some of my research, um, I've seen various people throughout Facebook donate to. And it's this organization here called Halo. It's, okay, so this organization right here is called Halo Animal Rescue. And some people have donated to it. So I went and did a little research about it. All right, so that's what it looks like and I went to their about page all right and it says our story and it talks about how a mother and daughter um, decided to open up a 501c3 out of their home back in 1994 uh, in order to rescue animals sounds good and then in 2008 they transitioned from a completely foster based organization to one with their first shelter facility on 35th Avenue in Phoenix. Okay, so I, um, you know, and then it goes on and on to say that they are part of PetSmart and the ASPCA, and it looks as though, when you, when you read something like this, you know, when you're reading it, it sounds really good. It sounds like, wow, this is a really great organization. They, they started out of their home and then they grew, you know, 10, 14 years later or whatever. And that's, that's great for them. But what, what I'm really hearing through my percep perceptive uh, skills is what I'm really hearing is that a really good idea was co-opted by multi-million dollar corporations. Uh, the pet industry is a multi-million dollar corporation um, and uh, PetSmart is one of the most successful. So Pet, Petco and PetSmart are one of the most, are the two most um, pervasive uh, pet organizations throughout the United States, right? You see them everywhere. And the ASPCA has a lot of funding. So we're talking multi-millions, uh, multi-million dollar corporations. So it looks as though this mother and daughter organization, which, which probably started out as something, um, you know, really, uh, really good for the community, has been co-opted by multi-million dollar corporations, <laughs> which means that the money that they make ultimately goes back into the corporation. It doesn't actually go into saving pets or taking care of pets or rescuing pets. It actually funnels back into these for-profit um, entities which have absorbed this 501c3. 501c3s are not government funded. So a lot of times you, you could look at a 501c3 and say that they are uh, they're sort of um, the way in which money gets filtered back into corporations and the government isn't involved. So there's no oversight, there's no, um, there's no investigation into, into it. Um, it, can become, it, it's, it can become really compromised, in other words. So, um, so that's, that's my takeaway from the HALO, from the Halo uh, uh, 501c3. So 
let's look a little bit more into Halo. So what I did is I went to their website. And if you look at their website, which is halorescue.org, um, so up at the very top of the of the uh, the website is a donate button. So to me, that's always a little bit a little bit strange whenever there's a donate button that is the first thing you see when you go to a website. And I'm trying to get the lighting right so that you can see it. Oh, that's a little bit better. Okay, so there it is. So there's the donate button right at the top of the of the website. So, and then as you scroll through the pictures of the animals that are for adoption, um, they don't. It's almost as if the an, the pictures of the animals that you see that are for adoption are not actually at the specific location. They're pulled from other other areas. So I decided to see what their facility looks like. If they are an animal rescue and they have an adoption uh, an adoption uh, place like they like they mentioned on in Phoenix, then certainly they would have a big sign out front. So I went ahead and clicked on the address which will take me to Google Maps and I get a screenshot of um, where they're located and I also get um, a little satellite picture of of what their facility looks like and so all of the rescue facilities that I'm accustomed to they usually have big banners that say animals for adoption um, again, I'm trying to get the, there we go, animals for adoption, um, uh, you know, come in and you walk in, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, appointments Tuesdays and Thursdays, phone numbers, something to indicate that there's a big animal adoption, maybe a pet hospital, um, you know, you would see puppies and kitties, um, pictures, you know, on the walls, on the outside. This is literally just a, um, an office park with nothing to indicate that there is um, a pet adoption facility here. So this is why it's really important to not <laughs> donate to these Facebook fundraising birthday campaigns. Um, because from where I'm standing and from the research that I'm do I've done, which I just did all the research in front of you. It takes no time, it takes no effort. Just a little bit of critical thinking skills and the ability to really um, uh, really break down what it is that they're telling you. So once again, an organization that seemed really um, legitimate in 1994 was co-opted by the, by the for-profit animal industry or pet industry in 2008 by PetSmart and the ASPCA and various other organizations that are worth millions of dollars. From where I'm standing, based on the picture of the location, it sounds like this. It sounds as though the entity Halo Animal Rescue out of Phoenix, Arizona is nothing more than just a call service, just a call center. So you call in and you say, I'm really interested in adopting Fido, which is a dog I saw on your website, and then they have you, they screen you through that process. That screening process, just to adopt one dog through this um, organization is $600. So that of that $600, they take a chunk for the screening process, and then they transfer you over to like PetSmart or the PetSmart adoption, you know, nationwide adoption facility or the PetSmart um, a local adoption facility or the local ASPCA. So this is literally a 501c3 that is meant to make money for people who are already very, very wealthy. The animal industrial complex is very is a very lucrative business. Um, and so that's the, that's the problem that I have with a lot of 501c3s, is that they are a legal way to basically launder money. And whose money are they taking? They're taking your money. When you go to your friend's Facebook page, she's like, hey, look, today's my birthday. And instead of um, buying me a birthday present, would you please donate a couple of bucks to this 501c3? Look at all the great work that they're doing to rescue animals. 
And so you do that and you, you, you know, you maybe donate 10 or $20 and then you go about your day and you say, wow, I did something really good. And that's kind of the whole point is that, you know, as human beings, it's our nature to want to do good for each other. We want to help the underprivileged. We want to help abandoned animals. We want to help abused animals. Of course we do. Um, and so you feel really good about what you've done. You've gone to this organization, which this is the claim. This is the claim that they make, that they, that they rescue animals. But really what they are is an organization that charges you a lot of money and, and to get that commitment from you that says, yes, I want to adopt a cat or a dog, it's $600 for a dog through this organization, and it's $150 for a cat, all right? And then what they do is they take a portion of that money for themselves. So this mother and daughter, which ultimately started out as a legitimate business, they're just basically making money to transfer your information over to um, a multi-million dollar corporation. That's it. There's no, um, there's, you know, all of the pictures of the animals on their website that they have for adoption, they're from other places. They don't have an adoption facility because I showed you, when I clicked on the Google Maps, I showed you that it was an office park. And, you know, the adoption facilities, for instance, in San Francisco, at least the one that I, that I know of, was also attached to a pet hospital. It took up, you know, a huge portion of a city block. It had SPCA out in the front. It had pictures of, of dogs and cats all over it. It it was very um, transparent when their adoption hours were. It was right stenciled right on the window. Walk-ins were welcome at certain times. Um, and I used to go in and take a look at the dogs and cats all the time. And they even have a playroom and they, and they also have an area for the dogs to go and, and do their business and walk around, like a dedicated area that was a parking spot, but now it's dedicated for the dogs right in the neighborhood. So there's nothing like this at this office park that is housing this animal rescue place, this halo animal rescue place in, um, in Arizona. My reason for doing this public service announcement or this PSA was to try to make raise awareness and try to make people realize that not everything is as it seems. Um, it takes very little effort to, to go to these websites and go to these Facebook pages that are, are being pushed out in front as birthday fundraisers or places to donate in place of, of you know, getting a birthday present or whatever. It's very easy to go look into them, and it's very easy to read between the lines and say, "Yeah, this doesn't this this doesn't sit sit right." Your money, your the money that you are taking out of your own bank account, your hard-earned money, the money that you live on to survive, is going back into, especially in this case with Halo Animal Rescue, it's going back into the corporation. It's going back into a multi-million dollar corporation. It has nothing to do with rescuing animals. It has nothing to do with raising funding to help the animals. It has nothing to do with that. It's strictly to put money back into the corporation. Um, and so this is a larger, uh, a larger conversation. This is a larger narrative that's going on 
globally actually. It's the co-opting of your legitimate feelings. It's the co-opting of your human nature. It is your human nature to want to help people. It is your human nature to want to lift society up. It's human nature to want to donate your money, your time, and your energy and a, a, a piece of yourself into something that, that um, will help benefit society in general. And social media especially is fully aware of our human nature. You know, there are psychologists that are on, you know, the boards that run social media all across the, 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 all across the spectrum. And they're, they're watching us all care for each other and lift each other up and talk to each other and donate to these organizations. And so what they're doing is they're co-opting that, that natural tendency that human beings have to come together and help each other. They're co-opting it and putting it back into a corporate entity that is soulless and does not care about, um, for instance, does not care about really rescuing animals, does not care about helping society in general. So you want to be very protective of those feelings. You want to be very, you want to hold those feelings and that, the, that idea that you really want society to, to be better. You want to hold it close to you. You want to have actual organic meeting places where you and your neighbors can come together and talk about where is there a need and how can we fix that need instead of just donating money to a 501c3 or a nonprofit or a government agency even that says that they're going to fix the need but then years and years go by and no changes ever take place so there's this new concept and it's not that new it's probably well it's been around at least since 2008 right you know when when halo animal rescue was co-opted by a corporation um, and that's that's a really good example so it's been around for a while this idea that corporations are going to save the people that corporations are going to to focus on where your needs are and they're going to ask you to pay to go into fixing the problem and your money just gets sucked right back into the corporation, gets sucked right back into their machinery, whether it's to pay for their administrative costs or to pay for their marketing. A lot of the money that you donate into campaigns and a lot of the money that you donate into nonprofits and 501c3s goes right back into their own business acumen, their own, or not acumen, their own business structure. It goes back into the way that they run their business. They need marketing people. They need to pay for a staff. They, you know, in the case of Halo Animal Rescue, I called at 8 o'clock in the morning their time, which was 11 o'clock our time here on the East Coast. I called them. And it rang and rang and rang. It rang like 50 times before it went to a generic voicemail message that said, the number you have dialed does not accept voicemail messages. Click, and it, and it hung up. So when you call an animal rescue place, even if you call outside of their op operational hours, usually you get, thank you for calling. Uh, for instance, we'll use the San Francisco SPCA um, Animal Rescue or Adoption Center. Thank you for calling the um, San Francisco Adoption Center. These are our hours. These are our walk-in times. These are our uh, appointment times. If you're interested in um, adopting an animal, please reach out to us during those times or leave a voicemail and someone will get back with you, you know, and they usually get back to you within like their business hours. So, but th that didn't happen with this place. It was just, it rang and rang and rang like 50 times. And then it went to a generic voicemail that doesn't even accept a voicemail message. So during the hours that they are open when you call, it goes to a call center and you get somebody who's got a script in front of her that says, thank you for calling Halo Animal Rescue. Um, how can I direct your call? Oh, I'm interested in adopting Fido. I saw him on your website. Great, let me take some information. And then that, that's when they, they start their script and they want you to pay that $600 adoption fee. 
So it's a very, it's, and this is all based on a corporate model. I know because I worked in this model before um, in, the, uh, in the beauty industry, you know. So I know all about it. And this is how they're, they're operating their business. Um, and it's, it's really insidious because what it does is it co-ops your desire to help an innocent animal that may have been abandoned. You actually have um, a legitimate um, desire. It's your, again, it's your human nature to want to help society, whether it's you, know, you want to help abandoned animals or whether you want to help poor people or whether you want to help you know, a, a troubled industry. Um, you know, that's, or a troubled community that's, you know, got issues with maybe poverty or drug addiction, which tend to go hand in hand. So, you know, all of these things are natural, legitimate, authentic tendencies and emotions to want to help people. But the corporate industry is so infiltrated into social media, they're aware of that. And that's what these birthday fundraisers are all about. You know, the money does not go. In most cases, the money does not go to the thing that you think it's going to. It's going back into their own corporate um, uh, agenda. It's going back into the way they run their business. Does that mean that all Facebook uh, birthday fundraisers or birthday donation requests towards nonprofits or 501c3s are co-opted and compromised? No. Not necessarily, but what, I, what I'm trying to do is not tell you what to think, but tell you how to think. You know, teach you how to think for yourself. If your friend is posting on Facebook, hey, please donate to this organization instead of, you know, giving me money for my birthday or buying me a present, please do this instead. Go research that organization. Find out the history of the organization. Find out if something major happened, like with Halo Animal Rescue in Phoenix, 1994, they seemed legit. 14 years later, suddenly they, they were partnering with, with uh, PetSmart and the ASPCA, which is a million-dollar corporation. Suddenly, they're, no one's answering their phones anymore. It's, going, it's, it's, uh, it's not even going to voicemail. Uh, suddenly, call centers are picking up you know, their, their phone calls during business hours. So think about stuff like that. Do just a little bit of research. Think before you just immediately go, oh yeah, I'm gonna donate, and now I feel so good. And now I feel so good that I've done my part to help society. When actually what you've done is you've probably just paid for, you know, somebody to take that second vacation this year, you know what I mean? It's, it's not going in, or to help their marketing campaign. It's not going into what you think it is. So this has a, been a public service announcement from Book of Hours. Um, I hope you appreciated, you know, what I said today, and um, I hope the next time one of these Facebook uh, birthday fundraising donation requests come across your feed, that you'll that you'll reflect back onto what I said and do a little bit of research into the organization. None of this is supposed to make people feel bad. Information is power. You should feel empowered to go and research all of the, the, the fundraisers that are out there and all of the organizations that are asking for your money uh, underneath your friend's birthdays. That's one of the reasons why Facebook wants your birthday so badly. You know, one of the many reasons. So think about that the next time you see a birthday fundraiser come across your feed. Thanks for joining. Talk to you later.